How's it going guys, my name is Dom and today I'll be showing you how to style a username and password input field using HTML and CSS, all right? So this right here is what we're gonna be creating in this video. As we can see, we have two input fields and two labels. Now there is actually quite a bit going on uh, for this particular example, but it's all very easy to do. So let's go inside this tab right here and we're gonna begin from scratch to create what I just showed you. And just quickly, we're also gonna be having support for just a simple error class to highlight uh, whether or not the input field has an error. All right, so going inside VS Code, it currently looks something like this. I've got an empty index HTML, so I'll make a new uh, page template just like this, and we'll say here, uh, styling username and password inputs. Um, now also keep in mind that of course, you know, this, uh, these styles can also be applied to any other input field on the page and not just necessarily your username and password field. Now I'm also gonna link up this CSS style sheet right here, index.css. Let's begin with what uh, the HTML is gonna look like. So firstly, we're gonna have a form which has a class of form. Now this here you may already have on your existing web page. If so, you can simply use your existing form. Now, this form is gonna act as a container for the input fields, of course, but the point I'm trying to make here is the width of your input fields is going to be derived from the width of the form, if that makes sense. So more on that shortly, but now let's create a new label and we can omit the four attributes because we're gonna be having the input inside the label. This here makes it a little bit easier and you still get the accessibility bonus um, you know, from having an input with a label. So here we're gonna be giving this a class of label and within here, we're gonna have a new span with a class of label dash text. This here is gonna be your actual label text. Let's say username, just like this. Now the second element is gonna be an input field, of course, with a type of text for the username field. We're also gonna be adding a few more things such as a class equal to uh, label dash inputs or just simply uh, inputs like this and as well as a spell check of false on the username field because you don't want your users getting the red underline for their uh, interesting usernames, all right? And lastly, a placeholder here. We're gonna be giving this a text of, let's just say, enter your username. Let's do the exact same thing, so uh, shift, alt, and down to make a second one here. So the exact same thing for the password field and we're gonna also be giving this a type of password instead to generate those black dots um, for the characters. So we'll save this, go back inside the browser and we get something such as this. Let's change the password placeholder to just be enter your password instead. And we can now go inside the CSS and finish up on these styles. So let's say a form or let's target the form class here and give this a max width of 300 pixels. So if you would like longer input fields, you wanna increase the size of your form. Or again, you might have an existing form and that has its own styles applied to it already. Maybe it's inside a container or something like that. But the point is this here is gonna be the width of the input fields. Um, of course, minus some padding. So for example, you can have a padding here of 24 pixels. If you're using a border, um, a, a border box, box sizing, then of course your width is gonna be reduced, but let's add that padding right there for the form class. And we're also gonna be adding some, uh, just a simple font family. We're gonna say form targeting everything inside of there with a font family of Lex end and then sans serif, of course, this here is an optional step. If you've already got a font family assigned to your website, you may not need this particular CSS rule set, okay? I'll save this, go back in the browser, and we get something such as this. We have that width set on the form and that padding, okay? 
Fantastic. Going back inside VS Code now, let's target the label text class. For this one, we're going to be giving it a font size of 16 pixels as well as a font weight of 500. You can opt for bold if you like. For the color, we're going to be using a slightly off black color. So a triple three here makes it look a little bit more professional. It's a pretty common trend. So we'll keep a very dark gray on that color as well as a margin bottom of 12 pixels. I'll save this, go back in the browser. Uh, the reason why we're not seeing that margin bottom is because we are yet to uh, add some, some styling to the label container, which we're gonna do uh, right now. So let's go back inside here now, and we're gonna be targeting the label class, and we're gonna be setting a display of flex right here, which is gonna do two things. If your width uh, allows for it, then it's gonna prevent your username and password uh, labels from being on the same line. In this case here, the width is too small, so it has no effect. So that's the, that's the first thing that's doing. The second thing it's doing is that it's gonna allow us to then uh, put the label and the input field on its own line as well. So right here, if we use a flex direction of column, I'll save this back in the browser, they are now on their own line. So using a simple flex box here is gonna allow us to um, have that uh, sort of more vertical structure. And lastly, between every single uh, group of label and input field here, we're going to add a margin bottom of 12 pixels, sorry, 24 pixels, just like this. Save this back in the browser. And that padding there, or that margin, comes from the form padding as well. You can use the CSS variable if you wanna get fancy, but I'll keep it the same value uh, just like this. Now we can move on to the uh, the input class itself. So for the input, we're gonna be having a padding here of 12 pixels, okay? Once again, keeping in theme with the 12 pixels on the label uh, margin bottom, and of course being half of 24 for consistency, right? So a 12 pixel padding on the input field, also a border of two pixel solid, and we're gonna be using uh, E0, E0, E0 for a very light gray. An outline of none to remove that default black outline when you're focusing on the input field. A border radius of four pixels, a font size of 16 pixels, and a color of once again, that very dark gray. I'll save this back in the browser and we get something like this. There's gonna be a couple more final touches here, especially when it comes to when you're focused on the input field itself. So going back inside VS Code here, let's add that effect now. We're gonna be saying input colon focus and when you're focusing on the input field, we're gonna be changing the border color to be 009578, that is the decode green color. Save this back in the browser, focus on the input field and it turns to a light or a medium green uh, uh, border color. So. We've also got the placeholder to style as well for consistency across different browsers. So back inside here, we're gonna say input, uh, the placeholder pseudo element here is gonna have a color once again of the very light gray. I'll copy and paste that gray right there. Save this back in the browser, refresh, and we have that light gray for the placeholder. Now, of course, I forgot to mention that the placeholder is optional because we've got the label here. You don't need a placeholder necessarily, but I kept it there. It gives the user a little bit more prompt to actually start entering uh, their credentials. The very last thing to do here for the CSS is gonna be to uh, add a transition on the input focus. So let's say transition on the border color for 0.3 seconds, save this back in the browser. When I now focus on the input field, it takes 0.3 seconds to transition into that different color, giving us a nice fade on that input field. Now, also worth mentioning that it's gonna be responsive as we can see right here because of that max width set against the form. And if you would like to have your own red border color against the input field in the case of an error, then you can do so using a CSS modifier class. And a modifier class is just a generic term for a class that you're gonna be adding to your input field. For example, input dash error. You can add this class using JavaScript. The point is you add this class and then if I go back inside here, we can say input dash error, and we can say a color or a border color actually 
a border color of just a simple red. I'll save this back in the browser and we get that red border on the input field. Of course, you're also gonna wanna add some text if you're using this maybe above here. That is it for this one. If this video helped you out, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.